Alright everyone, welcome back to Spidercast with me, Glenn Lentz. We're going to talk about Independence Day Resurgence, the second probably unneeded Independence Day movie, the sequel. Um, it has done 34% on Rotten Tomatoes, underperforming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows. That's not very good. doesn't look like it pulled in many people this weekend either. I'm assuming more people went to see Finding Dory. <laughs> um, what do I have to say? I don't, this is a movie I don't have much to say about. Uh, I was excited when I first saw the first, uh, trailer for it way back when, just because, uh, Jeff Goldblum was in it. I've been wanting to see Jeff Goldblum back in movies for a while now, so it's, it's actually, it's actually fun to see him in a movie, and he did pretty well in the movie, but, uh, as time went on and it got closer to the date when this movie was going to be released, I started kind of getting my hopes pretty low the more I saw the computer effects. and So I, I went into the movie with no expectations, no hope that it was going to be good. It's a sequel to a 20-year-old movie. And the first Independence Day worked great as a standalone movie. And there's a lot of things about this, the second movie that kind of uh, it kind of falls flat on. To try and recapture that. There's so many people have nostalgic memories of that movie. And it, there's a lot to take into account of why people do. Because it was a... At that time in the 90s, this is that's when we, we had Termin movies like Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Where it was a perfect blend of computer animation. Because computer animation was sort of in its infancy yet. Not infancy, maybe, you know, toddler years of computer animation. But people were mixing it with practical effects. And it looked great. Independence Day was one of those movies. It's a movie that Roland Emmerich did very well. And he did, you know, Day After Tomorrow in 2012. And it just started getting more ridiculous. And it's like, well, you know, now he wants to go back to Independence Day. Not to mention you had, you had some pretty good talent with the first Independence Day. You had Bill Pullman, Jeff Goldblum, Will Smith, who declined Independence Day Resurgence. Because I don't think he's big into sequels. Uh, and uh, with the first Independence Day, you get this sense of urgency. The, the stakes are high. We're, you know, we're outmatched. We're outgunned by these highly technologically advanced alien race from a different world. You know how how can we possibly overcome that with our you know weak weaponry and stuff? So it felt like the stakes were higher in the first one. And you know now we get Independence Day resurgence. It's set in present times, you know, 20 years later, but we're in the movie, we're so technologically advanced. So when they come back, it's kind of like we can hit the ground running, even though they, he, Roland Emmerich tries to make it seem like the human race still doesn't stand a chance, still tries to make it feel like the stakes are high and there's more of a sense of urgency. But the movie just feels like a sloppy reinterpretation of the first movie. Where it's like the, the pacing's similar. You know, certain events play out similar to the first one. Kind of like what I said about Jurassic World. It's like they took the script for Jurassic Park and, and said it right here and read it and then structured Jurassic World to that. And that's kind of like how it feels with this movie, too. Sure, we have different characters. There's another you know, twist in the plot in this one that makes it a little different. Uh, the big thing, one of the big problems everyone had a, an issue with was Will Smith not returning. We don't feel his presence here. He's He was a very strong actor. He, he was coming off of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air back in the 90s. Everyone loved him. He was funny. He was great in action roles, like in Bad Boys. And So do you kind of feel this? Yeah. You do kind of feel his presence gone in this movie, but we get other characters like Liam's he Liam Hemworth's character, which tries to add add some of that missing humor to the movie. One thing I will say, uh, you know, we get we get a lot of the original cast back. We get Judd Hirsch's, uh, you know, Jeff Goldblum's father in the movie. Jeff Goldblum, of course. We got Bill Pullman coming back. Vivica A. Fox, which was really unnecessary. They sh you know, spoiler alert, she has like maybe one or two lines in the whole movie, uh, you know, and then she she dies. 
pretty much. Her son can't save her from this building that was being demolished. Uh, we got Jesse Usher as Dylan Hiller's son, who it almost feels like he shouldn't have even been in the movie at all. This is supposed to be... I, I feel like he should have had Liam Hem, Hemsworth part of... He was going to be such an iconic character's son in the movie, and he barely did anything. He barely got any parts in the movie. I mean, was he on a team of these, like, hot shot, uh, you know, fighter pilots? Yeah, he was, but they should have worked with him and gave, tried to give him the Will Smith feel, try to try to emulate that, in my opinion. But instead, we got Liam Hemsworth. I'm assuming they gave him the bigger role because he's a bigger actor. I still enjoyed each of the actors. Now, a lot of people are saying that the acting was bad. I didn't really see a problem with it. I thought... I thought the actors carried the movie adequ- adequately for what it was. I feel like this was a tough movie to really follow up Independence Day with, and I feel like the actors may have had some trouble with it, with the script and the story and everything. Celia Ward I was happy to see as a female president. I loved her in House. She was a great actress. It's always fun seeing her. But, um... If you've seen Independence Day, you've seen most of Independence Day resurgence. You know, aliens come to Earth, we're not prepared. Even though in the movie it's hinted that we knew for years they were coming back. When the aliens do start making their presence known, certain other events happen. The people that interacted with the aliens beforehand start getting visions. Or uh, Brent Spiner's character, the weird scientist from Area 51, he's in a coma since 1996. And when the aliens start coming back, he wakes up from his coma miraculously. It, uh, when the aliens do come to Earth and start destroying cities, it just doesn't... The impact isn't there anymore. Like, I remember seeing the first Independence Day and the aliens destroying the White House. I'm like, wow, that's that's pretty intense. In this movie, when they destroy London, and you see images of Paris being destroyed or oceans being destroyed, destroyed i don't i don't know it the impact and the wow factor is it wasn't there in this movie uh yes it, it some of the some of the dialogue was all right it's corny as some of it was some parts i thought weren't needed like the popular liam hemsworth scene where he's on the alien spaceship pissing on the spaceship and giving the finger that's one thing everyone's been talking shit about that probably wasn't needed it was so silly you know it's one of those things where they tried making it so bad that they were hoping it'd be good, and it's just, it's not good at all. <laughs> uh, there, there is another uh, twist in the plot. We get there's another alien race that comes into the picture, and America is so afraid of aliens that when they, when these aliens come down to the planet to try to talk to the human race, everyone's just in favor of shooting the shit out of them right away and destroying their ship. Before they can even, you know, talk about their peace and what they're doing there. It turns out the alien race is there to help them stop the main aliens in the movie from destroying any more planets. And that's why they came to Earth to try and help them prepare and end up shooting them. They don't figure this out until, three, you know, almost three-fourths to the fucking movie. So there, there's your little plot twist that kind of differentiates this one from the first Independence Day. We get more more a little bit more substance and at the end of the movie they pretty much set it up for a sequel the aliens the good aliens want to take the earthlings to a different planet to help them prepare for more war interstellar battle so i'm assuming there's gonna be a third one if this movie pulled in enough money which i'm not sure it did i didn't see how much the movie made yet but uh the good parts I liked about the movie, we finally get to see the Independence Day aliens on foot shooting guns. This movie almost feels like Roland Emmerich was finally starting to... He said, well, there's th- there's things I wanted to do but couldn't do back in 96 with the first movie. But I, now I can do them with how advanced computer animation has, has come. There's a lot of examples of this in Independence Day Resurgence. It goes a little heavy on the computer animation, if you ask me, with this, you know, the ships flying in and 
there really isn't a whole lot of practical effects at all. It's mostly all done with computers. But yeah, the seeing the ground alien ground troops was was really really cool. There's a few really awesome characters I did like, like this uh, this this African fellow with double machetes who was trained at killing aliens because I guess some aliens were still alive on Earth after the Battle of '96, and he's been trained to kill aliens. He's got like all these tattoos on his arms marked down how many aliens he killed. He's, he's just a professional at it, deciphered some of their language. He was really awesome. You get you get this like kind of stupid comedy relief type character who follows him around, which is expected. You got you got to have some you got to have some humor thrown in there, I guess, right? Uh, it really seemed like they were trying to capture every feeling that everybody had from the first movie about this idea of unity and defeating and you know and an unbeatable enemy from outer space but it's just none of those feelings were there for me and parts of the movie i was just uh i had a little transformer syndrome where there's so much shit exploding and going on that i just kind of became bored with it after a while it's like okay it's, destruction's fine with certain things as long as it's doing a constructive positive thing to move the story forward and that's not there's some parts where it just wasn't doing that. It's like they're just doing it for the wow factor. Did I enjoy it? For the most part, yeah. But I, the one crowning thing that really piqued my interest in the movie after a while, because when the movie was nearing its end, the the main plot point becomes, in order to stop the aliens from drilling into the Earth's core and stealing the, you know, the Earth's core material and destroying the planet... Because that's what the aliens are doing this time around. They still want to kill off everybody, but they want what's in the planet. They have to go in and destroy the alien queen. Which is this huge fucking... A huge version of one of these aliens. And Bill Pullman does Randy Quaid's part in the movie, in the last Independence Day and flies a ship into the mothership where the alien queen is... in. Everyone thinks it's all done and over with. I even thought it was all done and over with because they take cold fusion explosives into the mothership and destroy it. So it's like, okay, uh, it, just, it just followed the original one. That's it's all we get. But then it turns out that the Alien Queen had its own shield generator and the fucking movie turned into a giant monster movie. And I, I love giant monster movies. I love all the old Godzillas from the 70s. I thought Cloverfield was okay. The new Godzilla was really great. Uh, so when I saw that, it's like, wow, holy shit. You know, my interest is peaking a little bit. If if you want to say I'm kind of stupid for, you know, beginning to like the movie more just because of that, fine. But I I can't help it. It's one of those cheesy things I grew up with that I love. But, but you know, there's a huge, massive battle. The alien is after the, uh, the other alien species orb that came to Earth, too. That's... That's another plot point I left out. The alien, the, the good aliens come to Earth in this like round orb that uh, can absorb other intelligences, and the queen alien is looking for that too. So they gotta, the humans have to stop the queen alien from getting her hands on that. There, you know, there's a huge dog fight with the alien queen and stuff, and there's this really gross scene where an alien falls apart. It's some corny humor thrown in. And it ends almost similar to the first Independence Day where all the main characters join up out in the desert by Area 51 and shake hands and whatnot, and it all ends on a happy note. You don't, you really don't get that feeling you did at the end of the first one, though, where it's like, okay, we're united as... The world is united forever because of what just happened and we were able to beat an unstoppable enemy, you know... USA, you know, we we can kick anyone's ass. <laughs> but um instead we had this big thing where the good aliens talked to Brent Spiner's character and it's like, okay, we're talking interstellar, interstellar war now, we're gonna kick some alien ass, so we're gonna see another movie in the in this franchise. Uh doesn't need it? No. I still look back on Independence Day as a good standalone movie. There really didn't need to be any more movies after 
the first Independence Day. There's a lot of movies like that, but there's still going to be someone who's going to want to milk the cow for all it's worth, and that's what this movie is, and the next movie will be about too. Is it worth seeing in the theater? Yeah, I mean, I, I was satisfied for what it was. If you go in with no hopes or expectations, then you won't be let down. It's a popcorn flick, in my opinion. It's it, There's nothing really memorable about it. You're not going to leave the theater and, you know three or four weeks later get the urge to fucking see it again like you know captain america civil war you know like one of those summer movies or x-men apocalypse it's not going to sit out in your mind like man i'd really want to see this fucking movie again it's one of those movies where it's like okay that's all right i don't need to see it again it was good not horrible you know not insanely wonderful either but it is what it is so uh that's all I have to say about Independence Day Resurgence. There really isn't a whole lot to say. It's just, it is what it is. It it's it exists. <laughs> Underwhelming, maybe, if you want to call it that. But I'm Glenn Lentz. Thanks for listening. Go watch one of my other videos. And I'll see you all next time.